Hello, I'm in Mogai Reservoir this week. It's absolutely beautiful day and I thought today we could learn how to write a tune together. A simple folk jig possibly. I don't know. I haven't really practiced this because I thought we could write it together. So what makes a good folk tune? Well in my mind it's something that you can sing in a really simple way. So a little hook. A hook that just sticks in your mind. Other people like more rhythmical tunes, but today I think we'll just try and write something dead simple. So we're going to do this together. We're going to find a simple phrase that will maybe get us started and we can maybe sing. How about this? That's quite good actually, I quite like that. I could sing that. <laughs> Maybe not professionally. Anyway, and then, so we've got our first uh, idea, and I think with a good tune, we need a response to that idea. So it's like a call and response. So it's like two people talking. So how about. Well, that's very simple, but I think it works. Let's hear the two of them together, see if we can hear the call and response. I think that's all right, actually. And then that's the first four bars of our jig in G major. And uh, then we do the last four bars, which will another call and response. Now we could uh, just play the exact same again and put an ending on it, or we could change it slightly. Right, actually, I quite like that. Um, I said, I did and then I need the call. The the response is. So we have a complete first part of a tune. Now let's just uh, very basically talk about the chords that you would have in a, a simple folk tune. It's uh, basically it's the first. The tonic of the chord, which in G is G, the, the subdominant of the chord of the key of G, which is a C major, and a dominant is a, is a D major, so it's called a 1 4 5. It basically, what that means is they are the only three chords you're going to need in the whole tune. When you get to the end of the first four bars, you're typically going to go and play the dominant chord, which is a D. So, because um, it's a D major, and when you play a D major, it always flows naturally back to the G. I think that's quite nice actually, I think we'll enjoy performing that at the end. Okay, now we need a second part. Now we've got a few choices here, we could uh, try going to the the relative minor of G, which is E minor, and basically that means that the E minor chord has one sharp in it, exactly the same as a G major, but it just sounds minor. Or we could just stick in the major. If you can, um, so that's a sort of E minor vibe. Or we could. Uh, I think for this tune we're just going to stay in the G major chord. So um, uh, let's have some ideas. All right, let's try. It's simple, but it's effective. And our response to that bit. Okay, there's a response for you, and then, uh, so let's hear both of them together. Now 
Now what I'm going to do is I am going to use an old trick that, uh, that I, I've heard in lots of different tunes. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to change the first the chord of the... <laughs> and I, instead of finishing Instead of finishing the, four, the four bars of second part on a D, the dominant as we talked about before, I'm going to finish it on a G7, which has got an F natural in it, and then I'm going to move to C. Now it's just a it's a well used. <laughs> it's very difficult to sit here. It's a well used thing, but it's quite effective. So. Um, So I've just copied the last two bars of the first part as well. So it's all linked. Let's hear the second part again. The thing about when you write a tune is you write the tune and then it changes. And then it changes again. So I'm going to write this tune out for you and I'm going to put a link in the description below and uh, and possibly it might be and if I play this when I play this again it'll be different again because they do change let's just uh, hear the tune that we've written So I think you could all do that. Why don't you give it a go? Any questions, get in touch. And if you do enjoy this content, why don't you support me on my Patreon account, which is patreon.com forward slash Simon Tumier. Any questions, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.